My groceries are coming. Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am here in Walmart's grocery pickup area. My groceries have already been delivered and I told her that if she didn't mind, I was going to stay here in this slot. There's plenty of empty ones. I'm not taking up space, you know, away from anyone else. I'm at the very end. There's one space left next to me. You watch somebody pull up there. It's just my luck. But I told her, I said, I need shade because I'm going to be recording a car vlog like she cares. And uh, so I said, I will be sitting here for a while and, you know, don't think there's something wrong. I'm just, you know, just recording. I do have the windows cracked because I feel like I want the breeze, but it is kind of loud. All right, here's the deal. I'm going to fill you in on some things, and I have uh, numbers to share with how much I um, spent on fabric last year. Some of you might be curious. Well, I'm sure a lot of you are curious. Some don't like hearing numbers. They see it as somebody is like just bragging or whatever. I absolutely love as a business person um, to watch others who share their, you know, stats and what they do. It encourages me. It always makes me remember that everybody gets in slumps and everybody gets out of it. I don't know. I just, I just love it. So I'm going to share with you stuff that I love to share. Um, why am I so freaked out? I thought I was going to be like all alone here, but how did I see somebody? Oh, there was somebody that walked behind me. Okay, I'm a nervous wreck, obviously. So I will be doing that, but first I want to update you guys on a major change for me for June. I will have Skylar for three weeks. The last week the, the whole third week, I will also have Derek. He's flying in on June 2nd with her, and then he's just flying right back out on the 4th. And then I'll have her for two whole weeks, and then he's coming back um, the 16th, uh, and then uh, going back with her. I can't remember. I think it's the 24th, so they'll both be with me for, you know, the whole third week. So I'm going to be busy with Skylar and then with Skylar and Derek and I have explained this to my exclusive shoppers that my fabric sales are going to be all messed up. They will still exist to the best of my ability because I, you know, I really want to still have some sales. I don't want to make people wait three weeks before I sell any fabric. I have lots of fabric at home. I have more on the way and I want to order yet more so I got to keep it moving. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? And I'm not sure how much interest Skyla will have with helping me with that. You know, she's going to be 13 and we went uh, over a year without even being together and it was like that crucial year where she grew up, she changed and I'm not like the the fun meme anymore, you know, but it doesn't mean she doesn't want to be with me, but it's just different. She's got other things on her mind and, you know, she's just not into as many things as she used to be into. But who knows? Maybe when it's just us together, maybe that, that old Skylar will be back and, you know, want to do crafty things or whatever. I visited her the last time in January of 2020 and then the pandemic hit and so I didn't get to see her until when did I go end of March of 2021 and you know it was just a different kind of a visit she was preoccupied with so many things she was still in school she's out of school now they get out in May and she still had tutoring and you know, stuff like that. And then one day she had an opportunity to go out and be with friends uh, that she hadn't seen in a long time. So I didn't even get to be with her that day. She took off, which I understood. She hadn't seen her friends and I was working there too. So I was, um, you know, able to just chill. You know, I'm very glad that I went, but, uh, you know, a lot has happened. A lot has changed since, um, since Skylar has been here for the summer because she didn't come in 2020. So the last time you guys saw her here with me was in uh, 2019. And uh, okay, so 
Uh, what was I going to say? All of a sudden I lost track. Oh yeah, so I still plan on doing sales. I will be able to do like more flash sales, but nothing scheduled. I do have a new schedule up for the month of June, and it's pretty much um, for three weeks, just nothing planned, but hopefully fun things. I would love to do a clearance sale for fabric that I've had for a little bit that kind of got lost in the mix. I am currently moving all my fabric to my mother's side because I have boxes stacked and then boxes with bolts standing up and I needed to clear that out so Skylar could get to the bed, there's a man right there, that, uh, that she'll be sleeping in. And so I've been moving that and I've been going through, well not going through, but looking at the boxes of fabric that I have and I thought, I can't cut all this. I realistically can't. I used to buy from a supplier. Um, he's going to be retiring, so I won't be buying from him after this summer if I even order again. I'm not sure I will, but I could get cuts, not entire bolts and a big variety. And I used to just order and order and then I would you know, cherry pick the prints that I liked and then some others would just sit there and I'd be like, okay, I'll do them the next time I get another order. Maybe more things will go with those, but then they just get forgotten about. And now I shop mostly bolts and my new thing is I have been buying wholesale pre-cuts that I can cut to various sizes. So that's a way I'll still have variety. Um, are you bored? I feel like you're bored. I'll still have variety without, uh, somebody barred next to me on that side. There was a lot more room. There was more room further away from me. It'll be a way to give me variety without having to buy like a bunch of two yard cuts and stuff that I don't get to see the prints of. Because with that supplier that I'm talking about, I can't pick the prints. I'm just stuck with whatever he sends me so I hope to have clearance sales I hope to have other little sales if Skylar's interested at all in this I thought that maybe she and I could even go to Marden's I haven't been to Marden's in well over a year since January of 2020 and um, you know maybe she could pick out prints for a Skylar's collection and you know sell half yards I could make sets of half yards she won't be doing the cutting I don't want anybody to worry about that I may you know if she again has interest show her how to cut half yards that would be an easy cut for her and I always cut generous so it's a little tiny bit crooked you know that would be okay so but don't worry if she cuts any half yards I'm gonna make sure you're getting your half yards so there's that I am uh, looking forward to it and you know I, I'm very good with not keeping my schedule for those three weeks because I think we will find um, new things that I can do and that she can do want to get her eBay back up and running now that she's out of school and that she has time to create things and um, so um, you know create things that she can sell on her eBay so all is good with that all right let me talk to you a little bit about fabric I ended up doing my taxes um, you know just a few days before the extended deadline I mean of course I knew my accounting and the numbers before then but I just wanted to get my taxes out of the way and uh, I paid a lot of taxes this year <laughs> like a lot so much that I was like he I think I, it's time that I have an accountant or you know a tax person who can help me find different ways to you know to save on taxes I am absolutely okay with paying taxes I just don't want to be overpaying if not necessary so I hooked up with a tax man who's been in business here in my town for I don't know 40 years something like that and it was okay I you know I still sometimes think that there's things that I know that he doesn't I mean I study everything I have done my own taxes I'm sure that I don't know more than him but <laughs> <laughs> that sounded bad, especially if he's watching, and I'm sure he's not. Uh, 
I study, you know, whatever I do. I've done my taxes my whole life, never had help, and other than reading every publication, we used to be able to get the publications and all the tax forms at the public library, and, you know, I would go through the tax form, and I'd be like, I wonder if I can take that, and I loved going to the library and getting the publication and going home and reading that and, you know, and learning, and, you know, so I'm pretty good, but I sold a rental property in 2020, and that had me stumped. I decided I was going to read up and learn what I needed to learn. And then I decided this is a lot of time I'm spending reading. And, you know, I just thought I'm going to get a tax guy and just have him help me. Because time is, uh, is money for me. So saving time means I can spend more time um, making money so I can pay more taxes. But my taxes this year were almost quadruple what I paid last year. So I had a pretty good year. Let's just put it that way. So I'm going to tell you um, what I uh, spent on fabric. And I was a little bit surprised. I thought it would be a little bit more. Where is it? Mm -hmm. I have to get to F. I don't know. Think of a number in your head that you think I might have spent on fabric last year. Of course you can't share that with me because I don't let you comment. <laughs> I spent a total of, and this is just fabric, it's not other sewing things, it's not like my cutting mat, stuff like that, it's just fabric. $27,373. Does that sound like a lot? That was in one year. So, you know, over $27,000 just on fabric, which is a little more than $2,000 a month. That's not much, I don't think, you, considering the amount of fabric that I sell. And, you know, saying that, you might think, wow, she probably has, you know, still a room full or a house full of fabric because she can't possibly have sold all that. I counted my bolts before I left and I do have 60 bolts. That might sound like a lot, but it's not. And not all of them are full. Some of them are probably, you know, half the fabric off them, but there's still enough fabric on the bolt that I didn't take it off the bolt and, and fold it. I left it on the bolt. So I have 60 bolts and then I do have these boxes of uh, some that are sorted that are ready to be cut and sold by sets but then some boxes that I have to go through so you know there probably is like I don't know 10 or 15 boxes of fabric and again that sounds like a lot but I can go through that pretty quick I really can and it's just uh, fun I love having the fabric in my mother's room because now I can see and I can get to things that I could see but couldn't reach because I would have had to move a lot of boxes to get to that. And, uh, I, you know, it's going to just make my sales better. It's going to give Skylar and I something we can do, sit on the floor. Well, maybe I'll sit on a chair unless she wants to help me up off the floor. And, um, you know, go through those boxes and really, like, do a clearance sale. Maybe do some cutting, like if I have a lot of fabric that's, you know, maybe four or five yard cuts and I want to do a clearance sale I could cut some of those and you know make sets of clearance fabric I don't know it's just uh, a lot to think about but I'll make it all work okay so that's how much I spent in fabric and then my other big expense with my fabric sales is the shipping so let me get to that and I'll tell you how much I paid and this I was also surprised that it was this low I thought it was going to be probably at least like three thousand dollars more than it is but i paid nine thousand seven hundred and fifty two dollars in shipping and i feel like i spend at least a thousand dollars per month on shipping i don't know but uh that's what it is so not too bad I keep thinking, why isn't that guy getting out? But I forgot, he's waiting for his groceries. That's the whole point of being in these slots here. What I don't want to call it a slot. What is it? Bay. Being in these bays is that the groceries come to you. And so I feel stupid now. I'm gonna wanna shut that side window.
Stop walking behind me. Why is there foot people walking? I can see this without my glasses. Um, okay, the other fee that I have associated with selling are my PayPal fees and my eBay fees. My PayPal fees were almost 2900 and my, what was the other one I said? eBay fees, those are minimal. Oh, not as minimal as I thought. Um, just a little over 1500 so those are my fees. Then, of course, I have things like my, you know, my cutting mats and my, you know, uh, geez, I have my clear thread, which I buy maybe twice a year. Oh, the other expense is the shipping supplies, my envelopes and stuff. I don't have the envelopes and the mailing supplies separate. I think it's just in mixed in with other supplies. I'm sure I spend at least probably 500 per year on that. I go through a lot of manila envelopes. A lot. And um, as for boxes and stuff, I don't have to buy those. Drop my glasses. Because I use um, USPS and they supply the priority boxes. I can get those for free, which is one of the reasons that I use them. And so that's what we have. What was the other thing that was funny because it was so low? Maybe I'll just post this. No, I'm just kidding. Oh yeah, and you know, and I, I do make a profit. <laughs> so you can tell that. I am selling a lot of fabric. You know, what was it? 27,000 plus dollars of fabric. And I probably only have in my inventory right now, even though it sounds like a lot, I probably only have like two or three thousand dollars of fabric at home. So I don't even know if it's that much, but you know, I do sell a lot of fabric. Yeah, so the one that's surprising is my gas that I put in this car. I only filled up three times in 2020. Um, once because I had to travel back and forth to Manchester, and I also had some doctor appointments, Manchester for the airport, and then I had some doctor appointments in Portland, so I used some gas there. And then later in the year, I don't know, just, you know, traveling back and forth to Walmart, that's pretty much all I do. I don't go anywhere. Then the last fill up was at the very end of December. I didn't even use that gas until the, you know, until this year. I filled up, you know, probably like on the 30th or 31st. So I only filled my car up twice and my car is, you know, probably 30 dollars 35 dollars at the time you know prices are up now so um i only spent like 70 bucks on gas i think that's kind of funny for a whole year is there anything else that you might like to know i don't know you probably want to know my income i'm not sharing that i can tell you what my affiliate income was affiliate income is what i earned when i was doing the coupon blog and at one point, I was taking in about a thousand a week just on uh, people printing coupons from my blog. So I had uh, a lot of affiliate income in those days because I had various outlets and not just the coupons. And I had a lot of traffic on my blog because of my coupon blog. My blog doesn't get very much traffic now, but I'm okay with that because I make my money in different ways now. Anyway, my affiliate income was only $1,800 for the year. You know, I would share these numbers, but some of you guys just um, don't think it's cool when people do that, which makes me very sad. People should be able to talk about money and be very proud of what they do. And I am, I am very proud at what I accomplish. I'm always amazed. I tell my exclusive shoppers this often. It's like, I'm, I'm so surprised every day that I do what I do. I know I work hard and I work hard at it, but it's still, I'm like, I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> and, I'm able to do it because I always just believed I could. I just never thought making money was a, 
it was hard and I enjoy working so I guess that's a good combination right believing it's possible and loving to do it you can't fail if you have those um, traits and I have them so I'm very fortunate that you know things have fallen into place for me in my life when I you know at least when it comes to earning a living and being able to support myself I still always worry that it could all go away and you know an illness could wipe me out so I'm just like hoarding 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 it all so that I can hopefully not be a burden to anyone or to have to be in a you know a lousy nursing home because nursing homes you know they're not they're not the best option you know I've always known that and now my mother's in one and you know it's just you know I wish I could afford to have her at home with 24 7 care you know I just wish I could do that for her it would just make me less stressed knowing what her living situation is and so you know I can't do that for her but hopefully I can do it for myself you know, if I have Alzheimer's or something, I don't know what I'll know. But, you know, if I have my mind, even though I need 24-7 care, I would like to know that I'm in my own home or wherever I'm living. And just having that kind of independence, even though it's not independence, just being in a, in a good environment, I guess, you know. But then you still have to deal with hiring people who aren't always the best you know it it's nothing is easy about getting old I have found so that's the deal with that is there anything else I really need to get home because I'm expecting a call from a doctor from the nursing home and so I told them to uh to wait until after one and I don't know what time it is but I, I need to get back I hope that you enjoyed this I will um, probably give you a six-month update because I'm curious as to how much I have spent on fabric so far this year. I buy fabric every single month, but in April alone, I spent almost $4,000 on just that one month. So I'm curious to know what I'm up to. And I do want to thank the people who shop with me for my exclusive sales and those who also buy from me on eBay. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's something I enjoy doing. I hope that you enjoy the fabric you get and that you're not just hoarding it all like I would be. I have no immediate plans to, to change this gig. I'm happy with it. And But, you know, all things do come to an end. But I've been hanging in there with YouTube. Has it been seven years now? Seven years this summer for YouTube. Yeah. Wow. That's quite a while. So it's all good. And um, I'm just going to keep going. All right, you guys. I have to go bring groceries in the house, which I don't like. And i got to have a phone call, which I absolutely hate. Thank you so much for watching. I will be back with more soon. Bye.